us pray. Lord, we give you praise for counting us among the living, for it is appointed unto man to die just once, and after that, judgment. Thank you that we are still alive and we have the opportunity to amend our ways before we we'll face you on the last day when you shall judge the living and the dead. Therefore, Lord, we ask that you support us with every strength and grace that we need so that we can make adequate preparation here and now that we are still alive. Speak to us through the power of your Spirit and help us to abide. Let your word not stand against us on the last day, but help us to absorb your word and use it to perfect our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Romans chapter 1 verse 18. The theme of today is God's wrath engaged on righteousness. God's wrath engaged on righteousness. Romans 1 18. Okay, I want to add verse 17. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Verse 20. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even the eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. God's wrath engaged on righteousness. For someone to establish a relationship with God, it takes just even less than a second, a hundred split of second. But to maintain that relationship deserves the whole of a lifetime here on earth. And for someone to have, if you look at it in a human perspective, for you to maintain a relationship with someone you must enroll yourself in a school, and that is the school of studying who the person is, the person's likes and dislikes, and what makes the person to be happy. You try to explore who the person is. And uh, the Bible says, can two work together except they agree? For two people to agree, there has to be some level of discussion God has revealed himself to us so that we can have an agreement. And part of, part of the agreement is that we have the knowledge of God so that we, we understand what God likes and what he dislikes. In this way, we can be able to work with him. There are some people who are very harsh nature, easily anger, they can easily flare up. But there are some people who are not like that. And you hear some people asking those who are very close to those who have anger, how are you able to live with this man? How are you able to live with this woman? How are you able to cope with your boss? They are able to cope because, first of all, they understudy the person and they know who the person is. If you don't know me, you can't work with me. If I don't know you, I can't work with you. Because one man's poison is another man's what? Another man's meat is another man's what? Another man's poison. But a lot of Christians feel 
that the knowledge of God is so much unnecessary. And when you look at the contemporary Christian and Christianity today, we tend to quote our men of God than quote the Holy Scripture. And I hear people say, my papa said, my geo said, my pastor said, this is what so 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 person said, bishop said this, archbishop said it, prophet so 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 said it. You hardly hear people saying it is written. And unfortunately, a lot of those who are telling us this is the way, this is what God says, majority of them, I mean what I say, majority of them are blind, leading the blind. And because of this, a lot of Christians have only one view of God, one-sided understanding of God. They see God as a God of love, as a merciful God. They see God as a forgiving God, that God is so merciful, he forgives iniquity. But there is one thing they fail to understand about God, and that is what we see in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22. The Bible says that for God is a consuming fire. For as many that have this understanding about God, you are blessed. I posted a message recently and I was screaming and somebody made a comment and said, you don't need to scream and shout when you preach the gospel that I don't even care no more about what you are saying because you are saying it with so much loud tune. And I replied to him and I said, it is a mat this deserves all the screaming and the shouting because it is about life and death. Why do we do mock exams? When someone wants to sit for a major exam, they organize mock exam. They bring out the typical questions. They time themselves. Me, I did a lot of mock exams in different subjects, even in my little stars as is. You time yourself and you try to, if it is English, you behave. You just assume you are in the exam hall and you try. And that is what the Bible calls self-examination. Self-examination. Today, one of the most lucrative business in the world is setting up a church. If you want to drive private jet, especially in Africa, set up a church. You want to be a celebrity, set up a church. And you want to be an Illuminati, but you don't want people to know, go and set up a church. Because there are blind men and women who will be ready to follow. Once you tickle their ears, oh, you are the people's person. Once you tell them that God is a loving God and that he will not do anything to harm you and that he will just destroy the sinners, in fact, you can go to purgatory and then uh, from there you go to heaven when your loved ones on earth pays, when they pay for your sin. Oh, people just rejoice. You are the man. But I tell you that if, if you have had a taste of God's judgment, you will know that almost every human being in this world will end up in hell. I tell you the truth. This is one big truth that many people don't want to hear. I have seen it, and I know what I am telling you. I am not a fool. There are some unusual things about my life. I am not a fool. I am not a fool. A lot of people have questioned my lifestyle. Not because I'm living in sin, but because of some unusual thing. But I know where I am coming from. Even if I don't know where I'm going to, I know where I'm coming from. God is a consuming fire. He gives us the whole of our lives to draw close to him and to obey him. But if we fail, listen, um, the David we read about in 2 Samuel chapter 12. God said, David is a man after my own heart. How many of you has God told that face to face? Or in the revelation that you are a man after my own, my own heart. 
But when David messed up, David was asking, who is that woman there? The servant that introduced the woman said, that is Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah. He preached to David. He did not want to do eye service. Me, I hate eye service. I hate eye service because promotion neither comes from the hills. It does not come from the west. It does not come from the north. Wherever you are, represent Christ. And when your time comes, God will shoot you above the sky. That is it. The man was not afraid to tell David. He said, that is Bathsheba, the wife of Uriah the Hittite. And David contemplated in his heart. And because he had already concluded the act of the adultery in his heart, according to Matthew chapter, four, uh, chapter 5, verse 27, down world, David could not resist. And when God was to judge David, he said, Nathan, a very quiet and humble prophet of God who loved the truth. Unfortunately, we don't have so many Nathan today. We don't have so many Nathan today. I pray for all ministers of God in the world that God will not use donkeys to speak in our place. I pray for Christians who have assignment in the world that donkeys will not speak in your place. Nathan presented the word to David and told David, finally, you are the man. And David said, I have sinned against God. Nathan said, David, you are not going to die. I have forgiven you your sin. God has taken away your iniquity. Let's open our Bibles. There are some things that I love about that passage so much. Take on Samuel 12. Look at verse 14. How be it? Okay, 13. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. David, the Lord just forgave you. Because you realize your sin, he has forgiven you. You shall not die. There, we have to understand the nature of God. There is a part of God's forgiveness. A lot of times, God takes away sin and wipes off the record totally. But the consequences live on. How be it? Verse 14. Because by this deed, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. And it did not end there. If you read the judgment of God from the beginning, you will see that God is merciful. But do we know that God has emotions? Do you know that God has emotions? You can make God to become angry. You can make God to become, you can pleasure God with goodness. You can make God to become sad. You can make God to become sorrowful. You can make God to become happy. When Solomon offered sacrifices to God, God was thrilled in his heart that he told him that Solomon, Ask me for anything. When Noah offered sacrifices to God, the Bible says that when God smelled the sweet savour of the sacrifices, he was thrilled in his heart too. And he said, never again will I use water to destroy all humans on earth. And that is a sign of the rainbow we see. David lost four of his children. He said, the person that has done this, we pay four times. And he paid. A lot of us have been deceived that we no longer know who God is. I saw a young man in Robert Road, worry here. And when we were talking, I was inviting him to church. He told me that he, in his dream, 
He saw the judgment of God. He was cast into hell. See, today this man still smokes cigarettes. He drinks alcohol. He's a drunk. God revealed himself to him. May we not see the judgment of God on the last day. We will see it all. But what I mean is that we should be on the side of rejoicing. We don't know. Some of us don't know what God is. And when I see some men of God sometimes say things that are not true and lie against the Holy Spirit, I weep in my heart for them. I tell myself, you don't know who God is. You don't know God. You don't know God. The Bible says that this blasphemy, the sin of blasphemy against the Holy Spirit has no forgiveness. Do we have men of God in the world today who will tell you that God is telling me, the Spirit of God is telling me now that there are 20 people here who will do this, who will do this. Men why God has never spoken. Are there people like that? May God forbid. May God take my life the eve I will start lying like that. May God quietly take me and let me go to him. The eve, the evening of when, before the day before when I will start lying against the Holy Spirit to deceive myself. It's better to die young than go to the fire of hell. Today, there are legislations that are being passed by different governments, especially in the U.S., that... Even a moment before birth, a child a mother has nursed for nine months, you can deliver the child even through the birth canal. And before you, find, you finalize the delivery, you kill the child. And it is still called abortion. Is that abortion? A woman went to the clinic one day and told the doctor, doctor, the doctor, a Christian, I'm I have a little baby in my hand and I just took it and I'm pregnant again. What do I do? I don't want to nurse children like this. People will laugh at me. And the doctor said, yes, I have a solution to your problem. What is the solution? He said, yes, we have to kill one of them. Do you believe two of them are children? Say, yes, they have a soul. Yes, they have a spirit. Yes, they have a body. Yes, I know. He said, okay, bring this one in your hand. Let's kill this one. So that the one that is coming will have some space. Today, abortion is no longer seen. It is no longer a sin. In fact, the level of spiritual corruption, year by year, we are in the end times, and every year, millions of demons are being released into this world. Millions. In their millions, they are, there are people in this world some of you who watch pornography, if you are here, there are human beings who are not humans who act pornography. They put them online. If you click and you watch, you are in trouble. You are in trouble. These demons will torment your life. Read Genesis chapter 6. You will see where fallen angels came and put on human flesh and had sexual relationships with men. We have a lot of problems today in the world. Because people are becoming more and more ungodly. I tell you the truth. If there is any other way to live in this world, and not even be a pastor, I would prefer it. I just go to one bush and hide myself there. There is too, even in church, the corruption in church is too much. That a lot of people we trust is like the one, your enemy in your village comes to the township to become your teacher. Become your examiner, the one that will teach you and also examine you and score you. What will they teach you? That enemy will teach you one times one is hundred. So that you can fail. A lot of us have seared conscience. The consciences have been seared with hot iron and there is nothing that moves them in the world. It does not start overnight. It's a gradual process. If you know you are going to hell from here, if you know you are on your way to hell, better call yourself back. Me, I don't believe in cash. 
I have been saying this since I was a small shy, a young kid. I told myself, I don't want to live for money. I don't believe in cash. There are some of us who will go February 16 and sell our votes. Sell our votes. Nobody should complain that Nigeria is corrupt. Just say we are corrupt. Let's not say it. Enough is enough. Enough is enough. Some of us will, okay, PVC, PVC, PVC. I'm just keeping quiet. If not, if I enter that place with secret cameras, there is no security in Nigeria. That is why I keep quiet sometimes. If I enter that place with secret cameras, I will just email it to BBC or CNN. Because we, we, many of us who are Christians, we cover sin. That those who are in positions we even commit sin and do deadly things, but will not say anything. Why? We are the custodians of the laws of God, not the angels of God. We humans, the earth has been handed over to us, and we who are shepherds, we have to stand up to duty. I have stood before the judgment of God once, and I know what I'm telling you. How many of us are ready to come back to God? Jesus Christ became angry against sin. God himself, it is the nature of God. The Holy Spirit too. The day you defile your body, the Holy Spirit will leave you. We have a lot of people who have defied themselves. The angels of God are gone. The Holy Spirit of God is gone. What they are doing is just put up, put on religious makeup and just flow along the line. Just flow along with Christians. How many of us still have our lamp shining? Another election is coming. Are you going to betray your country? The money we are owing today, the next two generations cannot pay it. People are laughing at us as Africans. We men of God, when we pray against witches and wizards, let us recognize the number one witch and wizard in Nigeria, our corrupt politicians. Witches fly at night and they fly in the day. The witches at night take electricity to their covens. They themselves, they take the bulk money that's supposed to produce the electricity to Switzerland, to UK. Then who is worse? I'm not saying there are no good people in government. There are good people. But when we pray, let's also remember the physical witches and wizards who have put us in this mess that we are today. Shame on us, African leaders. Because we have failed God. We have failed. We are the light of the one. Wherever we see ourselves, we should shine as light. If you are a religious person, you believe in, in God. Either one form of God or the other. Though I'm not saying that there are other ways, it's only through Jesus Christ. But even your own religion will judge you on the last day. Because almost all religions have some level of practice of morality. Let us call ourselves to order. Let's be on our feet. Ancient and modern. 51. Lord, he comes with clouds descending. Once for our favor, sinners slain. He comes with clouds descending. Let us pray. The verse 2 says, Every eye shall now behold him, 
robed in dreadful majesty, dreadful majesty, those who sat at naught and sold him, pierced and nailed him to the tree, deeply willing, shall the true Messiah see. Lo, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierce him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, amen. Lord, today, may we not be among those who will wail, but energize us, take away, search our hearts, can us, astray us, take away every iota of wickedness from us, and fill us with your spirit to enable us to run this race with zeal that we never quench. In Jesus' name we pray. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website www.egoeyeopener.com. Email us at rosannadavid at or info at egoeyeopener.com. God bless you.